What in the world is more fun than visiting a major theme park like Disneyland or Walt Disney World? They have fun and exciting rides, great food, and immersive experiences that you simply can't get elsewhere in the world. It's no wonder that millions of people flock to Disney parks every year. Of course, not every vacation goes quite according to plan. If you've ever walked up to the gate at Disneyland to see a sign telling you that your favorite ride is closed for refurbishment, then you know true heartbreak. Of course, it could be worse. You could be on your favorite ride when something goes terribly wrong. Here are 10 black days in Disneyland history. Number 10. Faulty Float Maintenance. Jamie and Elena Borikovas traveled all the way from Uruguay to visit Disney World in Orlando, Florida, in 1991 for their wedding anniversary. They were watching a parade on Main Street USA when the driver of the Snow White float lost control and hit the curb. One of the people of short stature went flying into the crowd, snagging some of the lights from the float along with him. Everything came crashing down on Elena. The light bulbs from the float were so hot that she received severe burns on her leg. She was rushed to the hospital, where doctors performed skin graft surgery. While they were in the hospital, a representative from Disney World showed up in Elena's room. They handed the couple a measly $1,222, which was a refund for their stay at the park, and a contract that absolved Disney of any responsibility for Elena's injury. The only problem is, the paperwork was in English and Jamie and Elena only spoke Spanish. When they returned to Uruguay, Elena's leg got worse, and it was painful for her to walk. She continued to need medical treatment for her leg, and it completely changed her life. A lawyer eventually helped them sue Disney, and they won $100,000, because the judge agreed that the contract was not valid when they understood what it said. Before moving to the next number, we just want small favor from you. Like this video and subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon and get one week of good luck for you and your family. Try this it really works. Number 9. Lane Graves. It was a warm evening in June at Disney, the world's Grand Floridian Resort in Orlando. The Graves family were visiting from a small town in Nebraska on a Disney World vacation. It was 9 at night and everyone was sitting outside ready to watch the fireworks. They would have never known that it is dangerous to be around the lakes at night in Florida, so they allowed their two-year-old son Lane to play near the edge of Disney's Seven Seas Lagoon. It's a manufactured lake in the middle of a luxurious resort. So while his parents were keeping an eye on him to make sure he didn't go into the water, they never could have expected what happened next. Out of the darkness, an alligator snatched the toddler up and pulled him into the water. Lane's father immediately sprinted towards his son and tried to wrestle the alligator, but it was futile. The creature pulled his son on the water the next day. Scuba divers found and killed five alligators from the lake before they could recover Lane's body. Number 8. The Unmarked Van. Disney doesn't want anything to ruin its magical image. Whenever something goes wrong, they try to handle it as discreetly as possible. In 1981, an 18-year-old named Mel Yorba was at a private party in Tomorrowland. He got into a fight with a 28-year-old man named James. Things escalated quickly and James stabbed Mel. Instead of calling 9-11 park employees called a Disneyland nurse. Security brought Mel over to a black unmarked van, and the nurse, who was arguably unqualified to treat such a stab. Van drove him to the hospital but he died. In a New York Times article from 1981 Disney publicly denied that they chose not to call 911 as a way to protect their image, and they honestly felt like they gave Mel Yorba adequate medical treatment. In a New York Times article from 1981 Disney publicly denied that they chose not to call 9-1-1 as a way to protect their image, and they honestly felt like they gave Mel Yorba adequate medical treatment. However, in 2000 it was actually proven in court that their policy was in fact aimed to protect Disney's image. Employees were taught that if anyone got injured they must call security guards first instead of 9-1-1.
After the tragic mutilation and eventual death of a four-year-old named Brandon Zucker, the family sued Disney, and they finally changed their employee policy so that 9-1-1 is called right away instead. Number 7. The Anti-Vaccine Outbreak In 2015, an 11-year-old child whose parents refused to vaccinate their kid caught measles. Then they took a trip to Disneyland. This child became patient zero of what ended up becoming a countrywide epidemic, and it all started with one day in the park. The Center of Disease Control was able to track down 125 people who caught measles after patient zero entered the park. Out of those 125 people, 39 of them were visiting Disneyland that day, and 34 of them were family members who caught it once an infected person returned home from Disney. A total of 110 of them lived in California. So many of these people caught it randomly once the virus out in public. The vast majority of the people who caught measles were never vaccinated either. While none of this was Disney's fault, it still became a major incident in the park's history. And it's an illustration of how quickly an epidemic can begin in a place with so many people. Number 6. To Infinity and Beyond. For years, if an accident happened on a ride at Disneyland Park, the company was not required to report it to the California Division of Occupational Safety and Health. In 1997, OSHA discovered that 7,260 people were admitted to the emergency room for injuries due to amusement park ride malfunctions, which was significantly higher than in previous years. Because of this, they passed a state law that amusement parks need annual safety inspections on all of their rides, and accidents where people are hurt need to be reported within 24 hours. The first accident at Disneyland that was reported to Cal OSHA was a crash on a space mountain in the year 2000. Number 5. The Not-So-Magic Carpet Ride At Disney Park, live musical shows reenact some of the most famous scenes of animated films. Kids love watching their favorite real characters on stage. Usually, the live performances have some sort of show-stopping feature that amazes everyone in the theater. And in the case of Disney's Aladdin, a musical spectacular, there is a real magic carpet that lifts in the air during a song, A Whole New World. In September of 2011, the illusion was shattered when the actors were lifted and then suddenly the support snapped. The carpet flipped upside down and the actors were dangling from a single harness, swinging back and forth like a pendulum. Audience members quickly pulled up their phones and recorded videos and photos. The lights dimmed and the pre-recorded voice asked the audience to leave. Thankfully, the safety harnesses were strong enough to hold the actors and they were rescued without any injuries. Number 4. Self-Absorbed Safety Hazard In 2015, selfie sticks became a fad. People use their phones to take photos and videos with all of their friends. But it would be incredibly stupid to pull a selfie stick out on a roller coaster that DIPs at fast speeds and loops upside down. Because it would likely fly out of the person's hand and injure or even kill someone. In June 2015, Common Sense did not stop one park guest from pulling out their selfie stick on the California Screamin' roller coaster. Once park employees spotted the selfie stick, they completely stopped the roller coaster while guests were already in the air just before it had a chance to drop. For two hours, park guests were suspended in the roller coaster, and there was an emergency evacuation. The name of the selfie stick owner was left out of the media, which usually means that they were a minor. Since this incident, Disney parks have made it very clear that guests are not allowed to use selfie sticks. Because they are a distracting safety hazard. Now there are no selfie stick signs all over the parks. Number 3. A Drunk Man Certain areas of Disney parks serve beer and wine at their restaurants. And even made certain locations for drinking, like Trader Sam's Enchanted Kiki Bar. Which stops allowing children after 8 p.m. Considering that it's mainly a place for families and children most people hold back from their heavy drinking. It doesn't make a lot of sense to pay hundreds of dollars for a Disney experience just to get blackout drunk. 
Except in the case of a 53-year-old man named Glenn Horlocker that is exactly what he did. In February 2012 Glenn Horlocker was visiting Disney California's adventure and got completely wasted. He was standing outside the Tower of Terror apparently being loud and vulgar. Glenn was asked to stop by an employee because he was disturbing nearby families. Glenn responded by throwing punches. A few visitors to the park jumped to hold him back. He continued to yell kick and act violently. Someone pulled out their phone and started recording just as a Disney security guard calmly approached and pepper sprayed on Glenn's face. Glenn Horlocker was escorted out of the park and arrested for assaulting the park employee. And now get ready for today's top pick. Number 2. Look out below. Disney's Skyway Ride is a gondola lift that suspended guests as high as 60 feet off the ground. People rode along the cable to the opposite side of the park, and it was seen as a convenient method of transportation that ran all day every day. In 1994, a 30-year-old man named Randall Charles fell from the Skyway when it was 20 feet off the ground and landed in a tree. The park rescue team had to get him down, and he was taken to a hospital with a few minor injuries. He tried to suit Disney for $25,000 claiming that the Skyway was dangerous and that he fell out. Later he admitted that he actually opened the door and jumped out on purpose so that case was dropped. The Skyway was eventually removed from Disneyland, but the reasons for his removal had nothing to do with the Randall Charles incident. Number 1. It's a rough world, after all. Disneyland opened in 1955, and one of the first popular attractions was its small world. Back in the 50s, there were very few places that thought about the needs of people with disabilities. And even in 1990, when the Americans with Disabilities Act was created, companies usually only upgraded things that were necessary to follow the new law. The very vintage at Small World Rye broke down several times on March 28, 2013, and yet park employees did not shut it down. They kept trying to make small fixes before reopening it to let more passengers. A quadriplegic man named Jose Martinez was in one of the boats, and he and his wife entered a dark cave filled with speakers blaring loud music. Suddenly the ride jolted to a stop, and since he was in his wheelchair the manning It's a Small World song was blurring directly into Jose's ear, and as he paralyzed he couldn't escape. On top of his paralysis, Jose suffers from panic attacks combined with an addition called dysreflexia which causes sudden spikes in blood pressure. Darkness loud music and inability to evacuate were excruciating combinations for Jose for 30 minutes. He was trying to call for help. Pleading to be taken off the ride or turn off the music at the very least, but there is no way to get him out of the tunnel since he is in a wheelchair. In retrospect, the situation could have been far worse but the point of the entire experience is that Disney was not prepared to help. Jose Martinez and his family sued Disney trying to get them to change their evacuation policy for disabled park guests. The judge awarded Jose $8,000 for his emotional suffering, but chose not to force Disney to change anything except to warn disabled people next time if a ride is having issues. This is the end of our video. What do you think about these incidents or accidents? Let's us know in the comment box. You can also watch some more amazing videos on our channel here.